You boys be quiet down there! Olympic level fencing. A land battleship. Broom scarecrows. A suggestive wink. And 90s fashion on full display. Don't cross the streams and don't cross the swords. It's all coming up on this episode of Neo Geo Generation. Welcome back to Neo Geo Generation. I'm your host, Neo Alec. Today we'll be looking at NGH number 037, Cross Swords, 1991 from ADK. As usual, we'll be looking at this game on my MVS cartridge here. Cross Swords was produced by Akira Uchizawa, who also produced Sky Adventure, Magician Lord, and World Heroes 2 Jet for ADK. He also did art and design for the games. ADK had a regular cast of programmers who worked on this game and many other ADK titles, including Eiji Fukatsu and Maki Ochiba, among others. The music was created by Yuka Watanabe, known for many ADK soundtracks, including Magician Lord, Blue's Journey, The World Heroes Games, and Twinkle Star Sprites. You name it, and Watanabe was often the sole composer, or one of a handful of composers on a great number of ADK releases. A strange castle has sprung up overnight in the kingdom of Belkana. King Angster dispatches several groups to investigate the rumors of this development, but none ever return. It soon becomes apparent that the ancient devil man, Nauziz, has awakened from his 1000 year slumber. The king's knights don't seem to have the skill to take on Nauziz, and soon Princess Clora is kidnapped. Will there be a hero with the skill and bravery to stop him? I mentioned way back in the NGH-011 video that along with the Super Spy, Cross Swords is the other Neo Geo game that gives the player a straight on view of the action. Unlike in the Super Spy, which provides a first person vantage, Cross Swords offers a view of the action from behind the character. To prevent blocking your view of the adversaries, your character appears in wireframe, much like in Nintendo's arcade punch-out games. In Cross Swords, it's important to be able to see your character in order to provide visual cues when your character is attacking and blocking low or high. Unlike the Super Spy, the behind view in Cross Swords allows for two players to join in the action, although each player is restricted to their own half of the screen. Start the game, and this dude with the very expressive face will show you how to play. I don't know, do we trust this guy? Press A to swing your sword. The B button launches your current magic attack. Hold up or down without a button to block low or high. Holding down while pressing A will do this thrust attack. And it turns out I was right not to trust this guy, because in English mode he tells you to press the B button to do this move, while the game shows the player hitting A. Japanese mode doesn't have this mistake. There are a total of three special attacks you can perform by pressing the A and B buttons together. Be careful, because performing these will use up a bit of your life bar. Pressing A and B together without a direction will do a spinning attack, which works well on bosses. Pressing down plus A and B will create an air barrier, a counter attack which pushes enemies away. A and B while holding up will fire a blast at the enemy, which can also reach enemies farther away. The basic gameplay loop consists of facing an enemy generally one on one, blocking their attack, and then countering with your slash. After landing one hit, you can continue with a chain of attacks. In general, during the first stage of the game, it will let you get away with going on the offensive and striking your enemies first, but after that, you'd better get in the habit of blocking or dodging first, and then waiting for your chance to counter. There still are some opportunities where you don't have to wait to counter if you time it right, like the moment when some enemies waiting their turn in the background jump in to engage. In general though, the game obviously rewards patience and strategy over random aggression. The timing for blocking attacks in this game is very unforgiving, so the lag of playing on a modern screen will add some challenge compared with playing on a CRT. You really just have that split second moment's warning to block, based on the enemy's animation. Most important to note is this meter here in the UI. This meter will quickly fill while taking no action, and will drop when you take a hit, miss, or block. 
Your standard sword attack will be much stronger when the meter is full, so in general you should always try to let the meter completely refill before attacking your enemies, simply because this will take much more damage and enemies will go down much faster. Cross Swords is an action game with light RPG elements. According to the Neo Geo CD version, this game is a real action RPG. As you defeat enemies, you earn experience points that allow you to level up, eventually maxing out at level 10 by the final stage. Of note are the merchants you'll encounter at the start of stages. Enemies drop gold to save for these merchant encounters. Of course, the quality and cost of the inventory increases as the game progresses, so you'll have to decide at each of these set points whether to spend your money on an upgrade or to save for something better at the next merchant. Without a doubt, the weapon upgrades help to defeat enemies faster, and decrease the time spent in the stages of this lengthy game. There are also shield upgrades, which increase your defense, critical to survival. Be careful in this menu though, because it's possible to downgrade your equipment and waste your money if you accidentally click on something you don't need. Other than the leveling and items mentioned, however, Cross Swords is mostly a straightforward action game, with few actual RPG elements. You will be given a choice between two paths at a few key points in the game, but this impacts little except one route will sometimes give you an item and the other won't, so it helps if you already know which choice to pick. Your magic attack varies depending on your current weapon. The default sword you start the game with, the ball sword, just shoots out a fireball. My favorite is the Scarecrow Sword, which this woman will give you early in the game if you choose to go to the ammunition warehouse instead of the food warehouse. This weapon gives you a magic attack that can turn most of your enemies, except for the major ones, into these training dummies, which can't attack and are easily defeated. To me, these things look more like a scarecrow with a broom for a head. Actually, I'm not really a horse. I'm a broom. Also of note is the Shield Axe and Shield Axe DX, which provide shield magic. This magic can be deployed to protect you from getting hit for a short interval. It is good to use against the attacks that are tougher to block. Don't get too attached to your favorite magic though, if you want to be able to upgrade to a different weapon as the game moves forward. In terms of the graphics, the standout feature when this game was released was the behind view perspective and large detailed enemies. This was what made the game stand out in arcades. By today's standards though, the look of the game can be drab, with muted colors and enemy designs repeated ad nauseum. Even backgrounds get reused and wear out their welcome, like this one used at the beginning of nearly every stage. That said, characters are well animated despite not having a lot of animation frames, and there are moments where the pixel art can be a feast for the eyes, especially the lighting and brickwork on the castles during transition scenes. The game overall has great presentation though, with nice screen transitions, music that generally fits the game well, along with high quality sound effects and voices. Along with the demon goat enemies, you will encounter these crab enemies. Crab people, crab people. And, um, Frog from Chrono Trigger, four years before that game was released. A full playthrough of Cross Swords will take one to two hours, although the amount of time needed will vary greatly depending not only on your equipment upgrades, but also your skill, even more so in this game than in most. Cross Swords is fun, but it is over long for an arcade style game and tends to wear out its welcome, becoming monotonous before the end. It helps if you have a second player to join, so there's someone to visit with during the game when you get bored. The game is divided into seven chapters, which are further divided into sections, sort of like stages, many of them ending in boss battles. While playing in home mode, you will be limited to only one continue for each player. The game becomes brutally difficult, punishing even the most diligent of players quickly after the first stage, so to help out and give players practice, the game allows you to begin from any of the first three chapters, not to mention the option of saving and continuing from a memory card, which as in all Neo Geo games, will restore your stock of continues. This game offers two save slots per memory card, which is a rare welcome feature. Unlike most Neo Geo games which only allow you to save and pick up from the beginning of the current stage, in Cross Swords the memory card will allow you to resume from many checkpoints throughout the game, including the final boss, Nauziz himself. 
It's a nice touch how this final map screen transitions straight into the game. Nice touch. But this last stage really drags on and wears out its welcome. This after the land battleship captain boss trying your patience with combo attacks and the trip through the hell-like caves of chapter 6. The final stage can take up a third of the game's full playtime. It culminates in the battle with Nauziz. He says he'll release the princess just because you made it this far, which is awful nice of him. He takes the form of a hammer pants wearing knight who throws every enemy at you before finally taking you on, eventually transforming into this serpent creature. What exactly is the king suggesting with his wink here at the end? The conventional reading is he's offering the princess's hand in marriage, but the wink is a bit off-putting, considering it's his daughter. Just what else do you have in mind, your highness? Yuka Watanabe's orchestral-style soundtrack, consisting mostly of brass and percussion, is more mood-setting than catchy. The music changes often as you move through the areas of the game and mini-bosses appear. This game's soundtrack was ahead of its time in respect to the music matching with the events on screen. However, the soundtrack can become very repetitive, reusing the same battle theme constantly. This isn't helped by the game's length. Some of the tracks become repetitive and even grating as the game stretches on. I swear this track is nothing but an 8 second loop. Far from tunes you'll remember when the game is done, the amelodic music is perhaps a bit too avant-garde at times. The soundtrack has its moments though. The merchant theme, which stretches into an epic for the staff role, ends the game on a high note. Cross Swords received mostly positive reviews from professional critics when it was released. The game was cited as an inspiration for the first-person perspective in the 2010 WiiWare 3DS and mobile game Rage of the Gladiator by the CEO of its developer, Ghostfire Games. Chair Entertainment's 2010 game Infinity Blade and its sequels also certainly come to mind as games that carry the spiritual torch. The Neo Geo CD version of Cross Swords was released in 1994, shortly after the release of the console. The entire game loads up in 60 seconds on a single speed system, and 29 seconds on a CDZ. The game never needs to load again throughout the entire play. As in most Neo Geo CD games without an arranged soundtrack, they've added an echo effect to the music, but ADK always really overdoes it with the echo. <laughs> it's as if since they couldn't arrange the soundtrack, they thought adding as much reverb as possible would make up for it somehow and sound fancy. ADK's poor audio mastering in their early cartridge to CD ports leaves a lot to be desired. The only thing I found missing from the CD version was the stage clear jingle. The boss music just continues playing instead during every score tally. The Neo Geo CD version of Cross Swords is perfect otherwise. Overall, Cross Swords is a fun game, with a unique behind-view action RPG swordplay concept that stands alone not only on the Neo Geo, but in video games in general. It seems like ADK was going for a fantasy-style theme similar to Magician Lord, but they failed to make something as compelling and memorable as that game in terms of the story, gameplay, and music. 
The two games even share some similar enemy designs, like this fish enemy or frog enemy. The fencing is more deep and interesting than the action in The Super Spy, especially when you consider Cross Swords has a two-player mode. It's worth owning, and certainly worth playing multiple times, offering a challenge level to keep players coming back. You will need to set aside a good amount of time if you want to play through the entire game though. It takes longer than most Neo Geo games to play through, and gets repetitive around the halfway mark. That said, the CD exclusive sequel to this game does offer many improvements, which we'll be looking at in a future episode. Until then, thank you for watching Neo Geo Generation. Next time on the series we'll be looking at another ADK game, NGH number 038, Thrash Rally aka Rally Chase. This will be the first of three different top-down racing games on the Neo Geo, so I hope you'll join me next time. Until then, go play some Neo Geo. This is Neo Alec signing off.